Welcome to our third video in our GUI Hangman tutorial series here. Um, so far we have, in our first um, video, we made our UI um, file. We, we generated that from our PyQt file, um, XML file. In the last lesson, or last video, we looked at the data store and we made our data store. So now we're going to start working with the controller. So we've done the model, we've done the viewer, and now we're actually going to sit there and work on the controller, which is our hangman.py. Now remember, this is this is our um, boilerplate, which you downloaded and you put it in the first lesson. Um, so what are we going to just start with? Well, first off, I'm just going to tidy this up a bit. Um, this is a boilerplate, so as in it's just pre-made code. So what I want to do is I'm going to put my little doc strings in. So let's put these in. You can just pause and type these um, because you haven't got the joys of cutting and pasting from your pre-prepared material. Let's just explaining um, so far in our main window here, we've got the component um, main window class. We've got the constructor, which is here. And in the constructor, it will initiate the game window. Then we've got the show function, and the show function will actually display the main window. The signals, we'll learn about those a bit later on, and they tie in with the slots, and we'll learn that about those in the next video. Now in the constructor here, I'm just going to say what we're going to do, the information we're going to put in here. So the first bit of information is what these are. So these are our um, setup, we're setting up the UI elements. Um, Okay, I'm setting those up. Oops, sorry. Um, back there. Then, after that, we are going to... Now, we haven't um, started doing this yet, but we are going to then add in... We're going to initialize... Um the game variables and then finally we are going to initialize the UI with their starting values Rightio, so let's go through and start working this. We don't have to change this. This is the same as what it is. So what game variables have we got here? Well, the game variables we're going to have to put in there. We need to put a database in, which ties across to our data store. Rightio, what other game variables do we actually need to have in this little section here? So we also need to have um, a variable for the word. So if I go back and look at our use case, so here we are. Um, our, our um, class diagram. We've got our database, we've got our word, we've got a guess word, and we've got our misses. Okay, so they're all of the variables that we need to put into it. So, um, as with o, uh, object rotator programming, this is all starting with a self um, because the variables are going to, um, the variables are tied into this instance of the main window. Okay, so DB self, this main window, the database for it, and to do that, I'm just going to make a data store, which is what we did in our last lesson. Now, it doesn't like that because I haven't imported our data store yet. So let's go up and do that from data store import data store. Okay. So now, squiggly line's gone, it's happy, I now have a data store. So self equals word, and initially the word is just going to be a blank. Okay, I don't have to worry about that. Um, self dot uh, guess words, guessed right. word is, and it is just an empty string. And then finally, self dot misses um, and that's going to be zero because you start with no misses okay so that's our variables created in here um, let's I'm just going to run it and make sure there's no errors it's not going to be any different but you just need to know if there's any errors that I've typed in there so let's have a look 
I'm running it. It's up there. It's fine. So I'm just going to quit. No, quit doesn't work. That's right. Just close it there. Okay, so we've done that. After we've done that, I now got to sit there and have a look at our starting values. Um, so let's have a look. There's a bit of a challenge here. To start with, um, I am going to um, look at the guest word. Okay, so let's see how we're going to actually create this guest word. Um, so when the game starts, the main window needs to, to get a word, and then we need to work out how many hyphens are in there, use to display that, um, and then we create choose word method to call um, from the constructor. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to, under the show, under show here, I'm just going to paste this code in so we can have a look at it. So this is choose word. This is a an instruction which basically says, okay, um, what we're going to do is I want you to get the variable, the value, self word. I want you to get that. So we use the get word method that exists in our data store over here. The get word method will return us a variable, will return a string of a random word, and that's going to be assigned to word. And then we are going to say self guest word will equal a hyphen times the length of the string word. So what's this going to do is it's actually going to make a list with a underscore for every single character in the length of that word. So that's just a little bit of string methods there, which will run you through that. So after I've done that, I now need to call this. So let's come down here and call it. And I need to call it in by saying self, because it's with, with this instance. And then I've got to hey, say choose word and open close brackets. Rightio. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a breakpoint here so we can actually see what the um, breakpoint just there. Here it is. So, so we can actually see what the value is. Now breakpoint is going to be just a little bit of, of, of debugging methodology that we use um, in, 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 in debugging. So what happens is that we're going to run the debugger here. It's going to run through and it's going to stop when it gets to this point. So hopefully what it's actually done in that time is it's come through, it's run here, it's chosen the word, it's, it's, it's run chose word, it's then gone, okay, here's the word, and here's the guess word, and those values should be stored into word. So I should be able to see what those values are, because after it runs that, that's when it runs show. That's the next, next one that actually runs, because it doesn't run show until much later on. So let's see, I'm gonna come over to the debugger over here, run and debug and say run and debug and I'm running Python and the currently active Python file. Okay, so it runs, it's done and it's got to this point here. So you notice the window hasn't been shown yet. Now, over here you'll see you've got these different windows here. We've got the call stack, which is all the very, all the different functions that have been called after each other. And then we have the variables. We have the local variable, which is a variable for this function, but what we want is the global variable. So I click on that and I want the global variables that exist in main window because that's this particular method we got here. So let's have a look. Come down and here is our two values, our two variables. We have um, the words. Let's see. Word is Westminster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven characters. And here's the hyphen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that seems to work out. So we've got all those. I'm just going to keep running to the end. Now you'll see that the actual window's popped up because it's actually playing that window. Um, and that's it. I'm finishing the debugging. Just going to go back to my normal code here. I'm going to take rid of that top, that breakpoint. But that's just a really cool, a really useful way of, of being able to stop the program where you want to stop the program and see what variables the values are for the variables at that particular time. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we need to do is we actually need to display the guest word up on the interface because at the moment it doesn't have anything in there. If I run it again, you'll see down here it hasn't got our little hyphens. So I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to create another, um, another function which we're going to run in here, another method. And this is again going to go before signals. So up in here, there's a, a reason that you will find that you want to put all your other functions up here and then you've got your signals and after signals, then you have your slots. 
and you'll find that out a little bit later on. But here we are with this code. Right, what does display guesses does? Well, it says, right, the display word, so what's actually gonna be displayed up on the in the user interface, right? That is going to be, start with nothing, it's an empty string. Then for each character in self guessed words, remember that's a list, and then each hyphen, or maybe hyphen, or might be a letter if it's been found, each character, so each element, we're gonna go through and we're going to actually in display word, which is an empty string, we're gonna add that character and we're gonna put a space between that and the next character. Once we've done that, um, we are going to then display it onto the user interface. I'm gonna delete that line so I can actually show you what it actually is. So self, I'm referring to the UI. Okay, self UI, which is up here, which is UI main window and UI main window is being imported from there. So from the actual imported, I want to type word label. Now word label is a label we made up in PyQt in the, in the Qt designer. That's the, the name that's been given to the label for the actual word itself. Um, and then I want to use the function set text radio. And what I want to set that text to, I want to set it to display um, display word there we are so um, to run that now nothing's going to happen because what I need to also do is come back up here and I need to call that function so remember this is still all within the initialize so when the net starts up it's going to create those variables and it's going to run these functions at the end and the reason that we're using those for a separate function is that you want to be able to call them at a separate time um, display guesses. Right, so let's see. I'm going to run this now and see what happens. And we can see I've got your little dashes there, and you got one for all the all the words that is actually happening in. So that's cool. Let's close that down. And one last thing to set up now for this initial setup of our of our user interface is we're going to talk about displaying the gallows, all those gallows images that we have. So, let's see, I come down again. You can see that it would be below here. Oh, no, not there, sorry. We go down to our below display guesses and before signals, and I'm going to put in um, this code. Okay, so again, this is the name of the function, display gallows. Um, it displays the gallow progression on the UI. Now, file name will equal f assets radio self dot misses. So, what this actually does, it makes a string and it says, right, go to the assets folder or the assets directory. And then this value, whatever the value is, which initially is self dot misses is zero. 0.png. Now if I bring the images back over for you to have a look at, you can see 0.png is that. Then 1, and then 2, and then 3. So as that number increases along, it will change to the next, um, to our next image. Right, now I've got an underline here. This is a QPix maps. Now this is what's used to help to actually display images in labels. So I need to import that from um, one of the PyQt modules. PyQt 6.qt GUI import and it was QPI pix map. Radio, so that's now come in. You'll see here that that's no longer there. Um, again, you actually say, okay, the file name makes the file name, then it will actually load that particular image up into an object called Gallo, and then it will display that Gallo in the label called Gallows on the user interface, which is that center place there. So let's just, oh, got to make sure I call it as well, where I initial at the end of the initialization there. Display Gallows, open close brackets. Let's run that. And okay, well, you can't really tell if that works because, well, 
it's zero is blank. So let's close that out. I'm going to change misses here to maybe four. And let's run that. And that did not work. Why did that not work? Let's have a look, see what I can find out here. So misses is four, self.misses is four. The assets run here. And just checking that again. Okay, let's just see what I'm going to pause and see what I have missed. Okay, I still haven't found out what I missed, but what I'm going to do, we're going to do some debugging. So let's go to Gallows, and I'm going to again stop at 21, 61 here, and see exactly what file name it is trying to upload. So let's debug over here, run and debug. Let's come through, and if I now look at, not globals, if I look into here, assets.4.png in assets.4.png is the correct one. So, if I come back to here and have a look at assets. Oh, is my assets files empty? Well, that is not helpful, is it? Right. So I didn't um, just going to fix that up externally. Um, git, and then I'm going to um, and paste them in there. Right, so now I've done that in, in the external. I've got the values here. So let's get rid of, let's stop debugging. Let's change that and let's run that again. And yes, there we are, it's come up. So um, hopefully you got you guys won't have that problem because I'm gonna go back and fix up the asset zip to make sure that it's actually working properly. Um, and then, um, so there we are. So we've actually had now, we've initialized our, um, Initialize. I'm going to change it from 4 to another value to make sure that works as well too. Let's say 11. Run it. And here it is. Okay. And I'm going to change it back to 0. Okay. So there we are. We have got the initialized and save. The initialized um, user interface. It's all ready to go. And now we're ready to start dealing with some of the interactivity, which we're going to do in the next lesson.